Good morning, Thursday the 29th, March 2012. Taquila. By SeaTac Airport. King County. Washington State, the United States of America, the world, the universe. Now, what's it all about then? Well, goes like this. There was this pianist. Not Paderewski, I can't think who now, all right? Not Horowitz, but a very, very well-known pianist. And what he said was, Clever old limb, I'm sorry, it's raining. <coughs> it's not the notes that matter. He damn the pauses between the notes, i.e. the timing, the cadence, the rhythms. That's why I love piano and not organ. Organ, Bach is like boom, 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 boom. All uh, mathematically so. Whereas the piano is spiritual. Violin is much more spiritual <coughs> in that sense because it all depends. So when Yehudi Menuhin played Beethoven's violin concerto, so let's say he was 17, he was probably then already known as the best violinist in the whole world at that young age. And then I've seen him play exactly the same notes, the Beethoven Violin Concerto, at the age of 60-something. And it's quite different. I find I read my Bible, and the same passage as the years pass, one puts a different emphasis, a different meaning into it, because you've seen more of life. I was training as a medical doctor, and you just think of, you could be, if you're bright, you could get into your training, get stuck in, you could be a fully qualified doctor in Britain at that time in the 70s by, just say, as young as 23, 24, 25 years old. That 25 year old a patient <coughs> deal with it in that way. I remember sitting in with a Mr. E. L. Tricky. He was a very well known orthopedic surgeon, Northwest London at the Stanmore, the Royal National Orthopedic. And this patient came in. Tricky was uh, established by then, well established, a senior uh, orthopedic consultant. And he didn't say anything, he always had a fountain pen and he wrote with blue black ink uh, f for a, a, some sort of orthopedic thing. But this lady had slightly turned in nipples, she had to see her chest. And that is uh, one of the diagnostic symptoms of cancer. So he didn't say anything, wrote in the notes this, you know, referral to a, an oncology cancer specialist. The young chap may well not have spotted that and just had the, and the way he did it, Mr. Tricky. With the doctor, you don't want a doctor coming in out of breath. So at St. Thomas's Hospital, where I used to work in London, by opposite the Houses of Parliament uh, on the River Thames, they have something called a misericorde. So it's a, it's a 13 stories to the, the new hospital building, and it just keeps rolling and you just step on, step up on the next floor. So, the beauty of that is you don't have to sit, you've got to get woof, your patients up there, you know, it's a stress call, you know, an emergency case, whatever. Instead of having to stand at the lift waiting, oh, the lift won't come with it, you know, the sign of the lift, you know, and there's a queue, you, know, you just step on this thing, you know, you can time it in your, in your spirit, and you never arrive out of breath with the patients. There's no point in you arriving. <gasps> oh, I say, I say, are you sick? Oh, I say, I've, just let me catch my breath. No, you time it. You walk fast, maybe. You never run 
in a hospital. There's no point. For the extra few seconds you've gained, you've lost a mile in your bedside manner. What you need when you arrive at a patient's bed is to instill a sense of calm and confidence and assurance and so on. That is worth many a pill and many a drug <coughs> because the patient <coughs> will just feel confidence in you. If you come in all, oh, I say, um, d d d what have you got? Do you know? And how do you feel? And, oh, ah, yes. Mm -hmm. Whereas if you come in and you say, good morning. How, how, how are we today? I wish they wouldn't do that, but they do. How are we today then? That's the nurses, actually. Yes. Anyway. And you just behave with quiet, calm assurance, then that sick person's spirit feels better. There's no... <coughs> you can't quantify that. Anyway, rambling on, <laughs> waiting for the library to open, <laughs> in the lovely rain, almost, um, Tequila, and the rest. A closing shot. <coughs>